world, I am re-recording my installing OpenBSD video because it was done poorly. I'll go through this one a lot faster. The first step is to go to OpenBSD.org, which is the homepage for the OpenBSD operating system. On there, there is an OpenBSD download link on the left pane. Click that. On there will be a whole bunch of links uh, in various protocols. Use the HTTP protocol unless you want to use the FTP utility to download it. With the HTTP you can just use your web browser. I'm going to go to this one because the mirror is close to where I live. Choose the version you want. It's always going to be the oldest one because that's going to have all the packages that are the most up to date, therefore secure. Then choose your architecture. I would recommend only installing it on a 64 bit or 32 bit computer that is not ARM because ARM takes more experience to install. During your first time, I would recommend that you even do it in a virtual machine instead of on a real machine so that you can see how it'll go. Another thing you're going to need to decide is whether or not to use a USB install or a CD install. If you want to install it from a USB, get the .fs install 60. If you want to install, yeah, USB is .fs, CD is .iso. There are indeed other ways to install it, like miniroot.fs, but I would recommend you not use those because flash drives of large sizes, much greater than 240 and 220, sorry, than 280 and 226 M's are widely available. If you have a real USB disk, you're going to uh, first look at your dev partition then once you have the USB plugged in look at it again you'll find a new thing here and usually it'll be a couple they'll look like SDA, SDA1, SDA2, SDA3, SDB and so on you'll get a new one it'll go in alphabetical order for OpenBSD instead of Linux you'll see it'll be SD0A instead of SDA1 and so on. It just uses letters instead of numbers, numbers instead of letters, vice versa. For the whole disk in Linux, it is the SDX, X any letter, without a number at the end. For OpenBSD, it's the one with the C on the end. Once I have my new uh, hard drive plugged in, I'll see it appear in the dev directory, in the root directory. And then I will uh, remember it. Then I will perform this command, dd, well I'll perform it as root, dd if equals my input file, the file that I want to write from. That's going to be install60.fs because this is a USB drive. So I would do ins install60.fs with the full uh, path to it and then of equals slash dev slash and then the one that appears here, the one without the number, and the one that is new. Uh, let's say it's SDC. BS equals 1M will make it a lot faster. Press enter, wait for it to go, and come back, get a cup of coffee. Once it's done, you plug it in the computer that you want to install OpenBSD to, and then reboot it. For a CD image, I would recommend you use the Rufus utility on Windows. Uh, 
same thing for a flash drive if you only have Windows to uh, prepare the disks from. Once you have a USB or compact disk, being a CD or a flash drive, plug it into your computer and install it. Before you install it on an actual computer, I would recommend that you use the Kimu utility, spelled like this, Q-E-M-U. That'll let you preview how the operating system will be once it's installed on a real computer. It won't change any of your files or anything. You can use VirtualBox if you don't have access to this or you feel a bit daunted. It's pretty easy. I'll explain how it is. The first command you'll use is kimu image which is a utility that allows you to make up virtual images. The create, the create argument specifies that you should create stuff. In this case, we want to create a pretend hard drive to install the operating system to. Because you can't run a computer without a hard drive if you want to install an operating system to it. This next part is optional. It's dash f q cow 2. It will make it so that the virtual hard drive doesn't take up the virtual hard drive size. So if I want to make the virtual hard drive be 20 gigabytes large, if you don't use dash f q cow 2, it will be stored as a raw image and it will take up 20 gigs. If you do dash f q cow 2, it will be a lot less. I think only about a couple hundred megabytes instead, which is a lot less. The next thing you're going to want is the name of where it's going to go. I'll call it hda.iso so I don't get confused later. And then lastly, you're going to want the size. Uh, default, it's t referring to the number of megabytes. The G on the end tells it gigabytes. All right, press enter, and let's go. See, it's right over there. Uh, and it is indeed only a couple kilobytes. Wow. Um, HDA is the new hard drive. Install 60 is the CD drive. We don't need to write the CD drive to an actual CD to install virtual operating systems. The command to actually run the emulator is Kimu system and then the architecture. We want x80, x80, x86 or x86-64. <coughs> Let's use x86-64 because that's what I am sure you have on your computer. Then we're going to put a flag HDA. This will tell us where our virtual hard drive is. It is HDA.io. So CD ROM, quite similar, except it specifies the hard drive. That's going to be install 60. Dash M tells us how much memory we have. A uh, good rule of thumb is, I don't know, about uh, a third of your RAM if it is less than a gig, if it is more than three gigabytes of RAM total in your physical computer, then use one gigabyte. Now there are a whole bunch of cool things you can do from here. If your computer is text only, you can do curses, and then it will be in text only mode. Uh, you can use VNC. Just read the documentation or Google it, and you'll get to some pretty cool effects. We don't want anything special, so I'll just press enter and go ahead. All of a sudden we see Kimu, which is the window that's running it. And then we see the text in the center, which is the OpenBSD installer. 
the OpenBSD installer is a copy of the OpenBSD uh, operating system installed to a CD or flash drive, stripped down of all of its fancy components, and it has a script on it. A script is just a file that does a specific thing, set of steps. It is almost always written in a shell scripting language, which is just the specification of how commands are formatted on the terminal's command line. Well, we got a prompt from the script. It wants us to tell it what to do. If you're clicking on this video, you definitely want to install the operating system. Auto install is for if you're a bit lazy and you don't want to do all the steps. I'm going to show you all the steps. So we press I because it's in parentheses in all capital just to show us that that's all we have to type. And then I press enter. It wants to know our keyboard layout. There's US, but we can also press question mark or capital L just like it says in the line. And then press return to get a list. It is a lot easier to, just to do US because the whole operating system is in English. If your keyboard's a bit different, use your keyboard's layout. Our host name is something we're going to be stuck with and we won't change, though we definitely can change later. So let's make it good. Usually you have the first word be what the computer's purpose is. And I'm just going to go and call it tutorial because that's what it's going to do. It's going to be a tutorial for all of you. Then we're going to put a dot. And then we're going to put the domain. That's going to be like google.com or whatever it's going to be supposedly running on. Thing is, most people don't have real domains. So we can just specify nothing and then it'll default to uh, some uh, domain that does not actually exist. It would be nice if we specified something just a bit more specific to show what circuit of machines it's on, what network it is. It's going to be on my local Wi-Fi, but I'm going to go and call it because I don't have anything good to put it as. If you work for Google, for example, make it .google.com. Okay, we have network interfaces. If you're lucky enough to be able to have an uh, Ethernet port, one of those Cat5 pluggers, in this day and age where everything's only USB, and if your laptop fatter than 5 micrometers, it'll go and cry and eat itself to shame. But, uh, I'm lucky, so since I have a virtual machine, it has a pretend internet interface that does ethernet just for me. So I'm gonna go and press EM0 DHCP. DHCP is a fancy way of saying automatically configure what IP address I have. I don't want a static IP. It's a program, and lots of fancy stuff is going on beneath the cur or behind the curtains. But I'll explain that later, or not at all. IPv6 is too futuristic for me, and we don't really want to configure anything else. If we had a Intel Wi-Fi card, it would show up. If you have another brand of Wi-Fi card, it won't in all likelihood. The problem with Intel Wi-Fi cards is that 
they're not free software. So OpenBSD can't include it by default without a whole bunch of legal disagreements. So what they've done is they make it so that you can install it once you've already installed your operating system. So you can't have access to your Wi-Fi card during the install. And besides, the OpenBSD installer does not support Wi-Fi in the first place since it's just too many steps to connect to a remote internet interface. Or at least, uh, that's my knowledge. Password for root account. Make sure you remember it and try to make it different from your user's account. I don't know. I'll make it something secret. Nah, I'll just set it to password. No, I want it to be good. Like your domain, like your uh, host name, which is what the computer's called, you are going to be stuck with it. You can change it, but you're not going to want to, so make it good. Start SSHD. Do you want to be able to connect to it by SSH? If so, press yes. It is insecure, so I would recommend you not do it. I am going to say no, because I do not want to connect to this computer by SSH. X window system. If you want a graphical environment, you do yes, otherwise no. It's a more lightweight installation if you don't have it. You can do it later, and it's a bit of hassle. I can show you in a later video. Change the console to COM0. If you have an old-fashioned serial console, <laughs> use that. It's cool. I like them. I don't have one. Well, actually, I do. It's uh, Control Alt Four, no, Three. Yes, no. It is Control Alt Two. No, it isn't. It's Control Alt Three. It's just that it's not displaying anything. Yeah, let's do that. Oh, it, it won't tell me what speed. Yeah, 9600 baud. Sure. It's not showing me anything. Oh, set up a user. Type in the username, don't type in yes. If you want to make a user called yes, first install it without a user, then create a user called yes. I know, I like to make up users called yes all the time, and it, it disappoints me greatly. And if you want to make a user called no, the same thing. I'll, I'll go and call it user, just for demo. You can give it a full name, and you definitely should. Uh, you gotta give it a password or you can't log into it. You can change it once you install it, but that's a hassle. You, I'll definitely show you how to do that. Time zone, question mark for list. Same thing as the keyboard layout. Just select the one you have. I have East Coast. The root disk. This one you gotta press the question mark and see. Well, I, I only had one choice. Uh, so I'll just use that one. If you already have something installed on there, you're going to want to fiddle around with the menu. Um, I don't have anything, so I'm going to make this MBR. MBR is easier to use OpenBSD with than GPT. So if you have a... Uh, the the luck of being able to plan something ahead of time make it MBR it's a pain to dual boot OpenBSD with other OS's so I don't recommend it also it's not that difficult just to um, either uh, rent a server somewhere or go to your local scrapyard and pick up a half working computer and just plug it into the wall without having the display work.
auto layout is what you usually want, but I'll show you edit because you might need it. This is mm, pretty similar to the F disk utility, but it's uh, user friendly enough, so I won't explain. Yeah, sure. So what it does is it divides up the disk into a whole bunch of partitions, one for each folder, or directory. You can divide that up however deep you like, but it only really matters to a certain extent. This is so that under no circumstances can certain users access that part of the operating system at all. It's, uh, it's like putting up a fence around a part of your house so your dog doesn't get out if it starts to misbehave. Problem is, in uh, OpenBSD, you have thousands of dogs. <sighs> called programs. So you're going to have uh, a shiny, nice fence collection. Uh, the sets are at the place you installed it. In my case, this is CD0. It is at the default location if you got it from OpenBSD.org's mirrors. You want all of these. I have not found an exception yet. Uh, you don't need verification because I'm sure all of you ran the SSHA some before. The way you do that is, uh, of course, but with the SHA some utility, which is SHA 256 sum and then the path to the image right in is a nine b six b which you'll find in the SHA two fifty six full file uh, it matches yay alright so we, we don't need any sort of fancy verification we good. Uh, we're done. We already installed them. What? Oh, wait, I accidentally said no instead of yes. Oops. Alright, now we wait for these to install. It's done. All right. Yeah, we're done. We don't need anything else. You also could have installed that from HTTP if you wanted to. But you don't really need that unless you use a mini root, which I told you not to. Oh, great. We're done. Excellent. Now just reboot your computer like it says. I would recommend just following the instructions and learning the operating system without me, but you looked on YouTube. There's no saving you. 